Hey guys, DMike here. It's time for another episode, another dungeon that we're going to complete today. This is the level six, the face shrine. So how about we go on and get a, get like a facial. Everybody likes that. This dungeon is a little more straightforward than the last one. Not terribly, but it's, I don't know, it's easier to navigate. There's not really a, a gimmick to this one as much as there was the last one, which is kind of nice. So these are whiz robes. I believe this might be the first time we've ever seen them. So there's plenty of ways that you can go about dispatching those guys. The item that we could have gotten from the trade sequence is pretty useful for attacking them, but I just like using the bow. We already went ahead and got ourselves that fancy pants hook shot and the bow upgrade. So why not take advantage of it? This dungeon is very much a fan of potable walls, crystal switches, it can be kind of annoying. And if you'll notice, there are these elephant statues that are located throughout the dungeon. Those are not just for aesthetic purposes. Those will actually turn into something useful later. Well, not really useful, but I guess the point that I'm trying to make is they're not just set dressing. Well, I mean, actually, they kind of are. I don't know. They're not exclusively for aesthetic purposes, we'll say that. So you got these crystal switches. These will probably come back to bite me eventually. I have a habit of forgetting which way they need to be, because I'm super good at this game. That's okay. In this dungeon especially, having the hookshot is a huge blessing because you can dispatch wizard robes pretty easily. A couple arrows will take those guys out. Pretty nice. We have the map, so we're going to go ahead and take a little peek. Sort of. I mean, I guess it's kind of like a mask. Doesn't really look like a face to me, but I don't know. That's just my opinion. Now, I believe... Looks like I missed it. This is I missed a chest here, so we're gonna go back real quick and grab that. Not from this side, though. Yeah, that's the one thing about this dungeon that really frustrates me, is that more often than not, I forget what I've done so far. So I'll go into a room, I'll make a ton of progress, and then one of the things that the dungeon will have you do is warp back to the beginning quite a bit and go and pick that stuff up and oh okay i see why i can't do that now just kidding so that was a potable wall if you saw that it had the little outline of the pot on it carrying a pot from one side to the next doesn't actually do anything for you it will despawn before you can get any further into that room so you're not actually able to do anything progressing that way so you might be wondering how are we supposed to go that way you'll figure it out eventually it's not really that tough of a puzzle I kind of alluded to it already but I'm sure my Mensa caliber viewership can put those two pieces together that is a potable wall right there that we can take advantage of and break through kill this weird starfish Get ourselves the compass. It looks like... Yeah. I did a little bit of a pre-run on this dungeon just because I had a really bad recollection of how this one went. My, my intent when I play this game, like I said, I think in the last episode, was not to come across as being too skilled at these games. 
I think that's more fun to watch when the person behind the wheel isn't, you know, blowing through stuff. I mean, I don't want to look like a complete fool. I do that on a, on a regular basis when I'm not playing games, so I at least need to look semi-competent. So here's another example of having to deal with wizard rubs. This one's a little tough because you're stuck with trying to dispatch them while dodging uh, the anti-fairy. I feel like that's what that is. And if it's not, then I don't know. It's an anti-fairy to me. It's in my heart. That room gets you a small key. Pretty cool. But the one thing, again, that really frustrates me just is how many times I will be dipping around and just completely forget something basic. I don't have to go back and fix it. So, but that's half of the fun. It feels like you're exploring along with me. The only downside is that I know that some some content creators on YouTube will, at least in the realm of like doing let's plays or, or game walkthroughs or whatever you want to call it, in in that in that sphere, I understand that for some people, they are fine with doing stuff that's longer format. Which is which is cool. I mean, if that's what you're into and that's what your your user base wants, then I mean, by all means, do it. But I'm also of the belief too that I have a finite amount of time, as all of you do, and as much as I would love to sit and watch somebody play, sometimes skillfully, sometimes not. A oh, see, that's exactly what I said I was gonna do. I even I even said in the back of my mind. Before I started recording, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna make that mistake. I made that mistake a couple times in my uh, in my run through of practicing. And I said, I'm not gonna make that mistake. And that's exactly what I did. Gosh, dang darn it. That's okay. We'll make it. You're in good hands in this neck of the woods. But what I was gonna say is, I know some people are fine with the long play format. Maybe that's something I'll transition to eventually. But I didn't need that. Uh, I just don't want to do that right now. I just, I just don't imagine that being something that I personally would want for this channel currently. I mean, the reality is that there may become a time when I want to transition to... Oh, I guess I have to go back this way. Oh, I can't go back this way. I have to use the... The Mambo's Mambo. That's going to be actually pretty useful in this dungeon. You have to do that a few times. I will find myself using that song repeatedly and trying to get through this dungeon. But... Eventually, I'd like to try streaming. I know that it's not something that I'm currently doing, but it is something that I feel like I sh that I should be equipped to do. I have the resources. I'm just not quite ready for that yet. So when I experience enough growth in this channel and in my own personal goings ons, then that will probably be when I move on to that. Hopefully. Before the summertime, that's my goal. I just feel like long format stuff in general, the point I was trying to make is that it can be kind of tough to watch if you don't really want to set aside a lot of time for it. So those little green blobs, I mean, there's nothing remarkable about them, but they kind of remind me of, if you remember, I don't know if this is before some people's time or not, but DVD menus, when you would put a DVD into a DVD player, those crazy circular discs that play movies. There would be a little DVD logo that would kind of bounce around. And it was just kind of fun to see if you could watch it hit the edge. That's a very iconic scene from the uh, from the office, if anybody's seen that. So this is our dungeon item. There's not really a lot of fanfare with this one. Probably because you get just an upgrade to the 
power bracelet over here. So that's not really, not really a da -da -da, you know, there's not really a whole lot of excitement that you get from that one. You know, the last dungeon, you get something cool. You get the hook shot, excuse you. And then this one, you just get an upgrade to the power bracelet, which as far as I'm concerned, the only use for it is this. Lifting these elephant statues, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, that's a bit of a buzzkill. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. It puts it in the room. There's a potted door at the bottom and I go ahead and I throw it the wrong way. I actually did that in my practice run too. So I did not learn from my mistakes. And I believe that's all this does. I don't think this is bombable. What's the map say? Yeah, there's nothing over there. This is one of those dungeons that you'll have to probably check multiple times. That's just a little pathway to get around the, the crystals. Excuse you. Yeah, shy guys are a bit of an annoyance. But the one thing that we can do, I think, is coming back in here. This dungeon was notorious for me as a kid. Not because it was difficult, but because there was one spot that I was missing. I don't know if this... Not a spot. There's a key I was missing. There's one key that you that I can constantly was missing. I don't think this leads to anything, no. Okay. We're just going to keep making the old progress -aroo. I don't think in particular I have any feelings for this dungeon. I think, dun you know, the Catfish's Maw is definitely my favorite just because of, you know, the gimmick is cool, the hookshot is fun. It's not too tough. I mean, it's tough compared to the fourth. I mean, going from the Angler's Tunnel to the Catfish's Maw is a bit of a step up. And it really does test what you've learned through your experiences. But, I mean, in general, it's not too bad. I would like the crystals to not be this way, though. So we're going to have to go back and get the blue ones up. Get them blues up. Yeah, this one's just kind of eh. And it also makes me wish that there was a little bit more done in this part of the game with the lore, you know, because they do, they just drop this right into that part of the game, like right before you go into this. There's like this, the big twist of, oh, it's a dream. And, you know, if, if you get rid of the dream that everybody inside this island is going to die and it's all your fault, like... That's a thing, but then they just kind of like, eh, whatever. We're just gonna not really focus on that. Now, in the last episode of the episode before that, I mentioned that this is the f one of the two dungeons, I think, that you can come out of the dungeon into the overworld. And this gives us a little peek at a future mini game that we'll be doing, not currently, but we'll come back to it. This is not considered a dungeon item because it's not in the dungeon proper, but you can get a secret seashell there, which is pretty cool. Now, this is a puzzle for those of you who have ever played chess before. These are knights. Knight pieces make an L shape. So you're going to, and I'm going to do this poorly, but you're going to want to try to bounce the piece onto the L shape. So this is the eventual goal. This is a spot that would work for it. So if you bounce the piece onto that or like a, near it, it's not... You know, it's not perfect, but you want to bounce it onto it, kind of moving with the momentum of that spot, then it'll set you up on that spot. That's pretty cool. That gets you set up and opens the door for you. Now, this is the reason why this little jump spot exists. You can get over here and continue your progress. Now, I believe we've done everything on the left side of the dungeon that we can do because this just has the the shenanigans of that starfish, or the anti-fairy. Yep, so we're gonna go ahead and warp back to the beginning. There is some optional collectible stuff in this dungeon in the realm of rupees. So you're going to want to I mean, you should be collecting everything if you can, but the main reason why you'd want to is just because... Nope. <laughs> I did that in my test recording too, and I said, how many times am I going to wind up hitting 
the ocarina. That's one. Okay. So that was just a silly little mistake. This is the first instance of this type of room in the game, I believe. There's a couple moments where you'll have this. These are the breakable tiles. They got rid of the kind of cool spinning sound they made in the original game. When they would come at you, it's like a And I thought that was neat. That's gone. I do like the nice kind of ceramic pottery sound that they did add, so I guess it's not a complete loss, but in general, not as cool in my opinion. So this room sucks, not because it's tough, but just because of how much time it takes. Wizard robes are two shot enemies. I believe defensively they are the one of the toughest ones you get to deal with too. And then they're also the ones that are guilty of having projectiles that they can shoot at you. They're not tough to deal with, but it's just more of a of an annoyance. You're gonna want to make sure that you've got the blue tiles down for this one. There is actually a, an owl's beak that'll tell you that. I think it's right here. Yeah, so hop on top of the crystals. I don't know if these are called crystals, then I don't know what the the, the switches are that we're hitting. Are they crystal, will they just be crystal switches? I don't know. But speaking of facials, we got some secret medicine. Rub that all over her face. That's actually a an item that when Link is out of hearts, you will have an automatic full restore. So that's pretty nice. It's what I thought that you were getting from the fairies, but it's not. I didn't. I thought that fairies were an automatic heal, but in this game, that is not what you get. The secret medicine is what you get. You can actually buy that later on, but for now, we get a free free trial. A little taste of the bottom of the pyramid scheme. So that's pretty nice. It's useful. I mean, it gets you where you're going. I'm gonna take another peek at the map. That spot that we just experienced a little bit ago, where there's that two, there's those two keyholes, is what we're gonna have to be aware of. And that's actually an important item that we're going to need to have to get to the final boss. But you can guess what it is. So we'll bomb that wall. And this is our mini boss. I don't quite remember this guy's name. Oh, I think it's Smasher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy's a bit of a jerk and he really frustrates me. He will throw his... I don't even know what you'd call it. His giant bowling ball at you. If you're fast enough, you can get you can get two, a two-cycle hit on him, which is nice. It's funny that he'll run away from you when sometimes he feels like, you know, his proximity to the ball is actually closer than yours, which is weird, but I'm not complaining. We'll take that any day of the week. Moving that statue there gets you another stack of, I think. And if you go north, this actually resets where you're at in the room, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure why that happens, but... I'm assuming it's just supposed to be kind of like a looped section of the map. You don't need to do that. Doesn't really take you where you need to go. This is actually not where we want to go either, I don't think. Oh, this tiled room has potholes in it, so we'll avoid that. And this is one of those crazy eye sucker things. I believe this was in the Bottle Grotto, and then there was one in the in the third dungeon, but we can't actually do anything with that. And this is actually the the pathway to the to the Nightmare Room, so I don't want to be going this way. But I don't have a choice now because this is one of those rooms that locks you in to your decision making to punish you for being ambitious and exploring. There's also a Beemos in this room that is relentless. Excuse me. Yeah, so that's not that's not the way that you want to go. We also don't want to waste our key just yet. But I believe if we sit through this room, you can just put your shield up and have a party. Letting all the tiles clear themselves out will net you a key anyway, so 
You lose one, you gain one. And it makes a cute little sword of heart. Is that what that is? I don't know. But this is where I got confused as a kid because I was always missing one key and I couldn't figure out where it was. This is that key. It's pretty simple. But I would always rush through the room and just try to go backwards. And in doing so, I wouldn't consider the fact that, oh, maybe there is a key in this room if I complete it. That's a very popular mechanic of this game is the completion of a room will net you a key. All right, so we got another one of these. I think it's easier to do this once you get all the pots out of the way. You should be able to do your little L shape. So from here, you can do it here. I think this should work. Yep. And I don't know if it matters from which side you throw the night heads, but it's whatever works for you, I suppose. All right. So a little bit more. These are thwimps. These are the little mini thwomps that you'll see in Super Mario World. I think these are in Super Mario 3 as well. So they get red hot mad. Now, this was an enemy that we fought in the second dungeon. These are Pole's voice. And you don't want to use the Mambo. You want to use Marin's song. Just because it doesn't interfere and warp you back to the beginning of the dungeon. This forward path nets you another chest, it appears. You can kill any collection of Pole's voice with that item. So that's pretty nice. The Ocarina will get you through some bad times. It's not really useful for a whole lot, but it does the trick there, so that's good. So another starfish, another puzzle. Boop. That's pretty tough to figure out. Wouldn't blame me if you had trouble. But this is huge. So coming into this part of the dungeon, you might be strapped for cash a little bit, and you're going to want to have at least 300 rupees for what happens between now and Dungeon 7. You actually, it's required. Uh, excuse you. No. That's why I really hate this, this stupid night puzzle. It'll be in like the area that it's supposed to go in, but then it won't. Maybe I'll start a little farther back. No, okay. That's frustrating. We'll try it from this side. There you go. So much for that. No, I'm not entirely sure if that's even where I want the switches to go, but I'll find out my mistake in a moment. I'll have to come back and reset that. Now, I am absentmindedly kind of running into these fairies, anti-fairies, whatever fairies. I'm just trying to brute force it to our second mini boss. How can you have a, how, you can't have a facial without a slimy snake here. So these are the Dodongo snakes. I actually hope I can get them to do it because it's there's kind of a cute animation that comes through with, yeah, there it is. So if you put a bomb in the way and it's too close to his forward progress or its forward progress, it won't eat it. It'll shake its head at you and be like, nah, nah, not today. This is another reason why you're gonna wanna get those that bomb upgrade. You can't put those the bombs down too fast, or else it won't. It won't go for it. It won't aggro on the bomb. So that's kind of annoying. But it's a lot easier to deal with this time around than it was last time. The key cavern definitely was. You're more strapped for ammo. Oh, I landed that right on top of him. That was cool. Come on, buddy. Yes, there he, there he goes. See ya. I believe I already have a fairy. Yes, yeah, so I don't even need another one. Going north. Okay. So I think we're just about done here. Aside from collecting the... Yep. So we just got to collect the final key. The nightmare key. And then we'll be done. Got to fight a boss, of course. Let's listen to what the owl has to say one last time. So, pretty tricky hint. You can't open that chest for whatever reason, just by itself. I don't know why that's a thing. It's never really become apparent to me 
in all my time playing this why that matters in any capacity, but I don't know, it is what it is, I suppose. It's very strange. So we're gonna take the Ocarina Warp back to the entrance. I actually am having an easier time with this dungeon. I mean, I did pre-play the fifth one a little bit, but not to any sort of level of consistency. Like, I didn't feel good about it. So, I wouldn't say that it really mattered. It didn't really, like, improve my skills or anything like that. I'm just trying to have some sort of muscle memory and familiarity with what I'm doing. So that way I don't look like a complete fool while I'm doing this. All right. So where are we? I don't think this is where I want to go. No, I went the wrong way. But we're close. We're very, very close. This guy sucks. Yes, all right. So the dungeon does not lock you in. I'm just gonna try to brute force this if I can. Ouch, that hurts. There we go. All right, guys, who's ready for a final boss? There's these two fairies here that if you have a proper item, you can hit them and they are anti-fairies. You hit them and they will turn into fairies. But I don't have that. All right. Welcome to Dungeon 6 Final Boss. Uh, excuse you. This is pretty creepy. This was not in the original. I mean, the boss was, but him interacting with us in this way. This is a facade. He is not a tough boss. But he does have the gimmick of having the floating tiles spin around the room at you. He actually becomes a mini boss, I believe, in one of the Oracle games. I want to say Seasons. In one of the dungeons. I don't quite remember which dungeon it is. It's been a long time since I played that. But he does have the ability to teleport stuff around the room, to cause pits in the floor. So just keep moving around. Really not that tough. If you touch him, then you will take damage. But I think that was six bombs. Yeah, so this just kind of reinforces what you learned. Surprise, everybody. That wasn't too bad. We did it, everybody. We did it. Good job, guys. You are a great help. Collect our heart container and our instrument. This time we get the old triangle. I played the electronic triangle in high school. That was a good time. All right, those were some fat beats, everybody. Can't go wrong with a little percussion. All right, so dungeon six complete. We're gonna be doing some hiking. But first, a word from our sponsor. I mean, I would too. We're about to erase their existence. So that's very cryptic. We'll figure out what that means. We actually will be getting some help from a feathered friend, but that'll happen next time. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you then. Bye.